Hello, and welcome to the RS-485 and Modbus Panel Pilot Ace tutorial. For this tutorial, we are going to create an application that reads inputs from an electronics device using Modbus RTU and translate it to text on a Panel Pilot Ace. There will be eight inputs that will read the text. The data sheet for the specific device can be found in the description box of this video. To begin this tutorial, we are first going to start a new project. To do so, go to File and New Project. For this particular project, we are going to name it RS 485 and Modbus Demo. The device model for this particular project is going to be the SGD70A. Select OK. Now we have a brand new project. To begin the project, we are going to add a background. To do so, I'm going to add a rectangle to our project. If you go to the library and double click rectangle, it will add it to the project. We are then going to change the dimensions for this rectangle. Change the width to 1024 and the height to 600. For the position of the rectangle, change it from 0 to 0 to make sure that it is equally centered on the screen. Next we are going to change the coloring of the rectangle to gradient. To do so, right click on the rectangle and select Add Gradient Fill. As you can see, there are many different options for you when making a gradient fill. For this one, we're going to use Linear Gradient. When you select that, it adds a brand new rectangle to the project. Select the old rectangle and delete it. We no longer need it. For this new rectangle, like the first one, change the dimensions to 0, 0 to ensure it is equally spaced on the screen. Next, we are going to change the colors for this gradient rectangle. To do so, go to the Gradient Stop section of the Properties Editor. The first color, select it. We're going to change this to a light gray. Select any light gray. The next color, which is white, select that. This one is going to be a dark gray. We're going to add one more color to this project. To do so, click this plus to add an extra color. This color is going to be even lighter gray. To continue our project, we are next going to create a title for our screen. To do so, add a text box from the Visual Elements section of the library to our project. The text for this text box is going to say Analog Inputs. The font size for this text box should be 50. The width for this text box is going to be 340 and the height is going to be 65. The position in the Y direction is going to be 25. And then I'm going to align this text box horizontally in the center. This is complete. Next, we are going to create labeled rectangles for each of the analog inputs that will receive data from the Neptronics board. First, we will create the rectangles for the labeled rectangles. To do so, we are going to add a rectangle to our screen. The width of this rectangle is going to be 175. And the height is going to be 64. We're going to change the color of this to a light gray. Next we are going to add a border to our rectangle. In the properties editor, if you go down below the color, you'll see a border section. For this particular rectangle, we're going to change the width of the border to 3 pixels. Now our rectangle has a black border. Next step is to create a text box that has a text of analog input 1.
The width of this text box is going to be 175 and the height is going to be 64. We are going to align this text to the center of this text box. To do so, go to the text alignment section and select align text to the center. This will make the text centered in its box. Now that we have a text box, analog input 1, and a rectangle, we are going to need to make a copy of each one by selecting copy and paste. We can set those aside for now. Now with the original analog input 1 in rectangle, we're going to put the analog input 1 directly over the rectangle. Select both of them by selecting text box 1, hitting control, and selecting rectangle. They are both selected. Next, we are going to group the text box and rectangle to form one visual element. Right click and select group. We are going to name this group group 1. That one can be set aside. We are now going to do it seven more times to make sure we have eight of these analog input boxes. For each one, make sure to change the number to go from one to eight to differentiate each one. Now that these new labeled analog input rectangles are created, we are now going to place them how we would like them on the screen. Place analog inputs one and four on the left side of the screen in a vertical row and analog inputs 5 through 8 on the right side of the screen in a vertical row. Just like this. We need to make sure we leave room beside each row to have additional text boxes. Select analog inputs 1 through 4 using the control feature used before. And now that all four of them are selected, right click and select distribute vertically. And now that they are distributed vertically, we need to, need to now distribute them horizontally. To do so, right click again, select align elements, and select align horizontal center. They are now equally distributed on the left side of the screen. We need to now do the same exact thing to the right side of the screen. So put those roughly where you would like them. Select analog input 1 and 5. Right click and align the elements vertically centered. So those ones are now centered. Do the same for the other ones. Select 5 through 6 and distribute items vertically and then distribute items horizontally. So they are all equally spaced. Now we are going to create the text boxes that will receive the information from the Modbus commands. To do so, create a text box. Place the text box next to the first analog input 1. We're going to make the width of this text box 300. In the text alignment section, select the align text to the left in the center to make sure the text is entered in its text box but to the left. Copy and paste seven more text boxes like the one you just created. Since the text boxes go over the screen, we need to make the analog inputs 5 through 8 move to the left a little bit. To do so, 
Let's change the x positions. Let's make it 540. Perfect, there is now enough room for these text boxes. We need to align these text boxes just like we did the, with the analog input rectangles. To do so, select the first four on the left and select distribute vertically. They should now e be equally spaced. Do the same thing to the ones on the right. Select Distribute Vertically. They should now be equally spaced. The last visual element we need to create is a button that will be pushed when we would like to get the information from the Neptronics board. To do this, add an ellipse to the project. The width is going to be 175. And the height is going to be 96. The color is going to be the same gray used as the analog input rectangles. So select light gray again. Just like the rectangles, we are going to add a border to this circle. Add a border with a width of 3. This ellipse is going to be at the top right of the screen. Next, add a text box that is going to go over top of this ellipse. The text for this is going to be collect data. And we're going to align the text to the center. Make sure you make it so that way it fits directly over the ellipse. Now select each one just like you did for the other rectangles, and group them together. For this group, we're going to call it Group Collect Data. This step is now complete. Now all the visual elements are completed for this project. Next, we are going to move on to the function and hardware elements. First, we are going to add the Modbus commands function element from the library. So search for the Modbus commands and add it to the project. Next, we are going to add the serial RS485 COM port hardware element. This hardware element will allow us to receive the information from the Neptronics board. In the RS 485 COM port hardware element properties editor. We are going to leave all the original settings except in the protocol section. We are going to change this to Modbus. This hardware element is complete. Next, we are going to create project variables for this Modbus project. If you go to your project browser on the left and right click on project variables, we will need to add eight number variables. Next, we are going to create a logic action that will link the text boxes that will be updated from the Modbus command to the number variables we just created. To do so, add action set rule from the library. In the properties editor, set expression section, click add eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On the left variable side, double click the first box. This is the element property that slash project variable box. In the element property section, add the first text box that will receive the data. So add text box nine. The property for this text box is going to be text. 
select OK. In the value section, at the bottom there is a project variable section. Select the first number variable for this. Select OK. Now do the same thing for each of the other seven expressions, making sure the second expression matches up with the second number variable and the second text box and so on. Now the logic actions function element is complete. Now we are going to go back to the Modbus commands function element we previously created. In the serial port section, we are going to change it to the RS485COM port we previously created. This links the RS485COM port and the Modbus commands function element. Next we are going to add a command. Click add. Change the type to read and then select Edit. For this particular project, the register type is going to be holding registers. So change that to holding registers. This can vary depending on your Modbus specifications. The starting address is going to be 12, refer to page 9 of the Neptronics data sheet, and this also can be varied depending on the Modbus specifications. Now we need to add command values. Click add at the bottom eight times to add eight command values. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we need to link the number variables we created previously to the Modbus command. Double click the variable section for the command values section. In the project variable section, add the first number variable. Click OK. Do the same thing for all eight command values. The command section is now complete. Select OK. Now we need to change the post action located at the bottom of the properties editor. We are going to change it to the logic action we previously created. This will allow the Modbus to update the text boxes. Finally, we are going to create a button that when pushed will receive the information from the Modbus command. To do this, we need to add a button from the function elements. In the properties editor, the visual element that we will select for this is the collect data visual element. On the clicked perform section, halfway down the screen, we are going to select the Modbus commands to receive the information. Our project is now complete. Thank you for watching this Panel Pilot Ace tutorial video.